Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week's video, I'm going to show you how to insert a nasal pharyngeal airway. A patient's tongue is the most common airway obstruction we see in EMS. And this is a very common tool that is used to mitigate that problem. So this is a nasal pharyngeal airway, also known as an NPA, and it's carried on ambulances, helicopters. You'll also see it in many military and SWAT IFACs. And then you'll even have it in some very well-stocked home first aid kits. So in this week's video, I'm going to go through this device, how to measure it, when you're gonna use it, when you're not going to use it, and then finally, how to insert it in a real patient. So if a patient is unresponsive or has a altered mental status, especially if they are on their back, on the ground, you might hear snoring respirations. And when you hear snoring respirations, that is a clear sign that their tongue is starting to obstruct the back of their throat and hinder the air exchange uh, to their lungs. So an NPA basically mitigates that and it bypasses the tongue and allows for that clear communication of air and helps the patient breathe better. Now this can be done on any patient. This can be done on somebody completely conscious, as we'll show today, or it can be done on somebody unresponsive, which is more commonly when we're going to use it. Another kind of big brother to this intervention is an oral pharyngeal airway, which is the same thing, except it goes in the mouth, and that cannot be inserted in a, in a patient that's awake. Honestly, we are seeing these used more and more in place of OPAs just because they're a little less invasive, and it has a lower risk of creating a uh, gag reflex in a patient. Obviously, somebody that has an altered level of consciousness vomits a bad thing. So if we accidentally put in an OPA and they have a gag reflex, we might be in a much larger world of hurt when it comes to their airway issues. NPAs are indicated for anybody that is unable to protect their own airway. Usually this is somebody with an altered mental status, like I said before, that has some snoring respirations. Now, it's contraindicated in almost no one. We used to say that if the patient had uh, any kind of facial injuries, we could not insert an NPA. The studies that basically uh, made that recommendation were a couple patients that had uh, NG tubes, which is a much smaller diameter tube inserted into their nose with facial trauma and it ended up going into the cranial vault. Obviously plastic in the brain is not a great thing, so they made the recommendation that if anybody has facial injuries, we don't put these in. Some recent literature has shown that these are pretty safe in patients with my minor to moderate facial injuries. If you have signs of CSF leaking out of the nose or any indication that there might be communication directly from the nasal pharynx into the brain, then these would not be a good thing to use. But in a majority of cases, if somebody has facial trauma, you can still insert an NPA. And this is being used exclusively by armed forces in combat zones where you do have IED blasts and a lot of multi-systems trauma, including facial injuries. We've found these to be safe. And as far as I know, not a single one has been inserted into the brain incorrectly. So I'm going to demonstrate the insertion, but just talking through the parts of an NPA, we do have the sizing right here, and a majority of your middle-aged male patients are going to be a 28 French. This is the most common size, and it's probably what's in most of the IFACs you purchase online. But these do go very small and very large. Now these are sized by placing this between the base of the nose and, depending on who you talk to, either the angle of the jaw or the earlobe. The sizing can be a rough estimate, so if it's not perfect, don't worry, it will still function. But if you have extremes on either side, you might wanna go up or down on your sizing of these tubes. When we prep this to be inserted, we're going to take some lubricant and we're gonna put it on uh, the unbeveled side of the NPA. We don't wanna get a ton of lubricant inside the actual orifice of this tube because that kind of defeats the purpose if it's already obstructed. We're gonna line it up with the nostril. Now, generally speaking, we wanna keep this bevel end faced, facing towards the septum. So we want it kind of in the middle of the airway. If you start inserting it in one nair and you notice it won't go, maybe they have a polyp in the way, you can switch to the other side and face the bevel to um, the lateral side of the patient. It's not a big deal, but it's not uh, preferable in a lot of these circumstances. Once we get it lined up, we're gonna insert it directly into the nasopharynx. Now, one of the uh, mistakes I see people do is they try to feed it up and down, which is not actually how your nasal anatomy works. When you start to feed this into your nose, you want to go almost straight back, and that's going to give you a much uh, cleaner insertion. Also, if you hit resistance, the answer is not to just force it further, uh, regardless of what you feel. All you should do is apply gentle downward pressure and rotate it slightly, and majority of the time, it will go back 
uh, into their airway. If it just doesn't work, you can switch nares like I said before. Now, there is a possibility that this will make somebody throw up. It's relatively uncommon, um, but somebody that has a little bit of a higher level of consciousness could uh, trigger a gag reflex and you could have a much larger airway issue. So be prepared to reposition them if you have to, turn them on their side, especially if they have spinal immobilization applied. Uh, have that pre-planned beforehand or have your suction ready to go. So with all of that being said, let's take it to the table and I'll demonstrate a live insertion and talk you through some of the steps as we do them. All right, so one of the first things we wanna do here is we wanna measure uh, this NPA to make sure we have the right size. So right here, I have a 28 French uh, NPA and I know this is the correct size for him, but as we measure it, we're gonna take it and we're gonna measure it right between the earlobe and the base of the nose. So maybe slightly small, but if I go a size up, it's gonna to be too big. And just visualizing the nair and this, I can tell they're about uh, the same size. So like I said before, we want that bevel facing the septum when we put it in. So we're gonna put it in uh, Brian's right uh, nostril here. We have the uh, medical lubricant. Now, this is not a kosher thing to do. It's not something that I would necessarily recommend doing, but if you're in a tight spot, um, the patient's uh, saliva or uh, blood will work as a lubricant to get it into their nose, and that is something that is used in a lot of non-permissive environments if you don't have this lubricant with you. So like I said before, we're gonna lube uh, this side, and we don't have to do the whole tube because as we insert it, it's going to kind of spread that out, but we do wanna avoid uh, the hole right here uh, at the front of it. So we've got that pretty well lubed, and now we're gonna bring it over. I'm going to just start putting it straight back. I don't wanna follow the nose up. We're gonna go straight back into the nose, gonna slowly twist it as it goes down, and insert it all the way to the hub. And <laughs> like you see, uh, he is able to still breathe and he's not uh, throwing up yet. But you do have to be uh, aware for that possibility. So in this case, if he did vomit, I would turn him on his side. So now taking this out, same thing, we just pull it straight out and back, and that's all there is to it. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week.